Um, well, I was that's, just about to put my Tory. <laughs> I was just in the face of everything. Well, Common sense. She said economic. she's going to rescue us and keep us safe. <laughs> what problem, right? They've just created this problem and said that we need gas to fix it. We have not had blackouts before. With an increasing amount of renewable energy on the grid, we're up to nearly 50% now. We have no blackouts. So why are the current power stations that we have not enough to continue preventing blackouts? They have to be by, by simple mathematics. Her point seems to be that it's a kind of a safety mechanism, Dale, just in case, whether it's blackouts or whether it's just that the wind don't blow and the sun doesn't shine. Well, look, let me explain it again. I'll try it with some numbers, right? We're at nearly 50% renewable energy on the grid, and we've never had blackouts due to the wind not blowing and the sun not shining. It's never happened. It's not going to happen, right? We have enough capacity on the grid to make sure that it doesn't happen. If and when renewable energy gets to 75% and we've got 25% balance of fossil fuels and stuff, why are the power stations that could deliver the 50% and more when we needed it, why are they not enough to deliver the 25% and more when we need it? Do you know what I'm saying? As mm. we shrink the role of fossil fuels in our grid, why do we need to build more? Is there an argument that uh, there is just a, a kind of safety thing going on here, Dale? I get what you're saying. There hasn't, you know, well, I, I can't remember... a. a this, this this whole blackout era, um, it used to happen back in the 70s, but that was down to strike action, not down to anything else. Um, but a government might say, look, a responsible government needs to have a contingency plan just in case. So why don't we have one? We've had 14 years of Tory rule. Where was the responsible government if we actually need a contingency plan? Of course, we have one anyway. We have a company called the National Grid. Their job is to keep the lights on. They've been doing that successfully. And, you know, we've increased the amount of renewables on our grid from about 1% 30 years ago to nearly 50% now. And we haven't had any blackouts from renewable energy. We have enough fossil fuel capacity on the grid to fill in the gaps when the wind doesn't blow. We have it now. So why do we need to build more? Because our demand for electricity is not going off the charts. It's incrementally increasing. This is a, this is a fake problem from the Conservatives in order for them to, uh, to parade themselves as champions of fossil fuels and energy security and energy independence. And, you know, it makes no sense because half our gas currently comes from the rest of the world. The other half comes from the North Sea. The North Sea is in terminal decline, right? It's emptying itself out or is being emptied out. No amount of new drilling can change that fact. We are dependent on the rest of the world for our gas. So new gas stations don't make us more energy independent. They won't lower bills because we don't have control of fossil fuel pricing. Global markets have that. All of this is nonsense. It's quite incredible. Have Labour missed a trick here, though, Dale? I mean, this is the party that you support. They've agreed with this and said, yes, we understand that, you know, we acknowledge that retiring gas-fired stations need to be replaced. Why would they say that? Um, I think they're making a... Are quite maybe it's too subtle. Maybe the point they're making is too subtle. I'm trying to make the same point. The capacity we have now in gas is enough. We don't need more. What Labour is saying there is that if we retire a gas uh, power station, we need to build one to replace it. They're saying that we don't need new ones to add capacity. We need to keep the capacity where it is. Now, that makes sense to me, except for one thing. Gas-fired power stations don't need to retire. It's not a nuclear project where you have to, like, seal it all in concrete and run away for a 1,000 years. You just take out the worn-out pieces, the turbines. You've got a grid connection. You've got cooling systems and everything else. You just put in new turbines, and you carry on burning gas again. So we don't need to build new ones even when the old ones we have get too old to function. We just uh, <laughs> reuse them, you know? But shouldn't Labour have been clearer on this? Shouldn't they have? Shouldn't Ed Miliband have come out and been? I mean, yes, of course, he has said that the reason uh, that uh, the Tories can't deliver lower bills and energy security is that uh, we need we energy security we need is that they are specialists in failure when it comes to our clean energy future. Now he might be right about that bit, depending on where you sit politically or depending on where you sit on this specific argument. But wouldn't it have been better if Ed had come out and said what you just said? Yeah, I think, I mean, he didn't get it wrong. We do need to replace the ones that retire. Uh, what I'm saying is we don't need to build new ones. We just replace the kit and, you know, we refurbish them, essentially. So he wasn't technically wrong in what he said. I think this is this is incredible, really. The, the Tories have created this problem, right? Overnight, they said, we've got a problem. We've got to take some tough short-term decisions or we're going to have blackouts. That is nonsense, absolute nonsense. The National Grid are running this show very well. They say we can get to 100% renewable energy without blackouts. They don't say we need to build more gas-fired power stations. So you're saying it's a different kind of get we, we the, the, the existing 
gas-powered stations. We keep the stations, but we alter what's in them, essentially. When they get too old to operate, we don't need to build new ones. Let's say we've got, I don't know, 100, 100 gigawatts of capacity. I don't know what the number is. There's nowhere near that much of gas, right? We don't need to add to that and make 150. We just keep it at 100. And as renewable energy increases on the grid, we'll use less and less of that 100 anyway, because we'll need less and less of it. But we can keep enough for the backup that we need without building new ones. Honestly, it's such nonsense. It's really hard to argue against. <laughs> if you, I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to put my Tory hat on for a second, Dale, um, and just wonder here, maybe that the Environment Secretary, bearing in mind she was addressing Chatham House, do you think it's possible that she actually agrees with you, but she used very select wording so that it made it sound like she was very much team fossil fuel, because that would have pleased the gallery she was addressing. Um, and in fact, she kind of means exactly the same as you and Ed Miliband have just alluded to. So not new ones, well, I think that... just refurbished ones. But no, because it doesn't make sense to say we'll back you all the way to build the, you know, the power stations that we need. It doesn't make sense. She's talking about new stuff deliberately. So, but here's the thing, Ian, none of these people are going to be around in government by the end of this year, are they? They know that. The industry knows that. We all know that. Whatever they say is just a distraction well, from... That, yeah, but you Dale, know. you might be wrong here because Boris is back, as you've just been hearing. Johnson has re-entered the fold. The mighty blonde one is back in the game. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm loving that. I thought I was in a fever dream watching your show for the last <laughs> 10 minutes. All this talk about Johnson and Sunak uh, teaming up and stuff. Look, I, I think that's great. But as as one of your, your commentators said, look, the policies aren't changing. Right, You can drag a big personality into this battle. Johnson's got his own problems. He came out of the COVID inquiry bad, quite frankly, reputationally. He did some very bad things while he was in number 10. The public aren't stupid, right? He, he may be jovial and, uh, you know, like... Uh, bit of a laugh to be around but you know we've we've uh, we've seen him in action when the nation was in crisis and he let us down he's not going to get over that in a hurry you've written a book called manifesto um and it's just been re-released but with new material in it we can actually see it there on the screen um <laughs> how much uh, i mean just i mean this is a your idea of how the world the country the world should function in a greener more environmentally sound fashion would that more or less be it yeah, it's about how we get to net zero uh, without spending a lot of money, actually. I think what I show in the book is that it's cheaper, actually, for us to get rapidly to net zero in terms of greening up our energy supply, electrifying transport and changing what we eat, eating more plants and less animals is cheaper than not doing that. And, and in the case of getting to 100% green electricity on the grid, we don't need any public money at all. And that's counter to the kind of media narrative that we're used to hearing. You know, the Tories saying, oh, Labour will borrow too much money for the green economy. And Labour saying, well, we won't, we'll be careful. Mm -hmm. um, and actually what I'm saying is you don't need to borrow money for it because the cost of wind and solar right now are below the cost of wholesale energy on the grid. And they're, they're staying that way. They're dropping. They're the cheapest forms of energy we can make and the fastest and the cleanest. And we're building them now with no public money. So are other people. And all, the, all we have to do is actually change the planning regulations, unban onshore wind, which is one of the stupid things that David Cameron done. Bless his socks. He's back as well. I saw that in your previous piece. It made me smile. I mean, he cost the nation £7 billion. In the 10 years since he banned onshore wind, our energy bills uh, become £10 billion, high, uh, sorry, £7 billion higher than they would have been if he had not done that, because onshore wind is making a huge contribution to lowering our energy bills, something that fossil fuels can't do. Anyway, I'm running on now. What was that's all right. I was just going to say, uh, you've thrown a few quid in Labour's direction in Keir Starmer's. That's well known. Um, but how much of your manifesto do you think the party you now support will adopt? I have no idea. Um, I'd like to think all of it. That would be great, but I have no idea. Um, none of it's radical. I think the most radical thing in there probably for most people is the idea that uh, they need to eat, eat less animals and eat more plants. And for some people, that's not radical at all. They'd be like, yeah, I, I know that makes sense, right? Uh, what I'm not advocating is everybody gives up animals on day one and goes, you know, 100% vegan straight away. That's not a sensible trajectory. But as a nation, 
be vastly more animals than we used to. Uh, you know, it's exploded since the Second World War, the advent of industrial animal farming uh, and fertilizers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and it goes hand in hand with an explosion in health issues for, for us humans. You know, uh, bowel cancer, heart disease, all that kind of stuff has gone up with our consumption of animals. It's very clear in the data uh, and, and the science is clear as well. I think that's the most radical thing. Greed energy is not radical. It won't cost us money and it will drive our energy bills to the floor and keep them there. And electrifying transport is happening all around us. Why, why don't Labour stick some of that in their manifesto then, Dale? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but I'm hoping they will. I mean, can, you not, can you not say, look, here's another couple of quid if you get this one in there? No. No, I'd never do that. And I give them money because I want them to win. There's always a disparity in the arms race in terms of how much the parties can spend. At the last election, the Tories spent more than all the other parties put together. For this this election, they've doubled the spending limit to £35 million, hoping to outgun everybody. I chip in because I want to help close the funding gap. What I don't do ever is ask for anything in return. There it is. Dale, thank you, as ever. Dale Vince, uh, he is the owner of, founder of Ecotricity.